Welcome back. We now have Amazon EC2 set up, we've got Jenkins running on it, and now it's actually time to configure Jenkins to act as our continuous integration server for our project. Now by default, Jenkins does not have any security enabled, so the first thing we want to do is enable security. So I'm going to click on Manage Jenkins, and then we'll click on Configure Global Security. Okay, and then we'll just check the box Enable Security, and we're going to say that we're going to use Jenkins own user database. There are other ways we could set things up, but we'll just for simplicity use Jenkins user database. Uh, we also don't want users to be able to sign up. I'm assuming that we already know all of the people that are on our project and who should have access to this server, so we won't let users sign up. We will create accounts for them. Now also for simplicity, um, we could set up various levels of access so that certain users are administrators and certain users only have read-only access. For simplicity here, we're just going to say that logged in users can do anything. And we'll just leave it at that and we'll click on save. And you can see that Jenkins now logs us out. So we now have to set up our first account. Uh, we did disable the ability to sign up, so that poses a bit of a problem. Fortunately, Jenkins allows us to sign up for the first user. So if you just click on the little Jenkins link over here, it will take us to a sign up form. So I'm going to create an account. Jeff, just give myself a password, type in my name and my email address. Okay, and I'll click on sign up. Now, just so you know, that is the only time it will allow you to sign up. It will not allow any further users to sign up, so you will have to create accounts for them. So I'm now logged in, and we now want to set up the global configuration for Jenkins. Before we do that, though, there's just a plugin that we want to install. So I'll click on Manage Jenkins, and then go to Manage Plugins. Now there are probably going to be a number of plugins that you already have installed and there are updates available for them. So we'll just check all of those and let it update those. Might as well keep things up to date. You're probably not going to use all of these plugins, but we'll just say install without restart. And we'll go back to manage Jenkins or manage plugins, I should say. And now we want to go to the available tab. Now, sometimes when you create a Jenkins server, the list of plugins that are available is empty. And so if that's the case, if you don't see any plugins here, you can actually go to the advanced tab. And if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, you'll see check now. So if you click on that, that will check for updates and that will update the list of plugins. So let's go back now to the available tab. And for now, there's one particular plugin that we want. So in the filter, I'm just going to type in GitHub. And what we want is the GitHub plugin right down here. So I'll check that and then we'll say download now and install after restart. So it's going to, it's installed all of those other plugins we told it to install and these ones are pending. So I'm just going to say restart Jenkins when installation is complete. So we're going to let Jenkins restart itself. And this is going to take a few minutes. Uh, you may refresh and it may say service unavailable. Just wait about two, three, four minutes and it will come back to life. So once Jenkins is back up and running, uh, you can just refresh the page and you can log in again. So I'm just going to log back in here. And you now want to create any accounts for the rest of your team members. So to do that, you go to Manage Jenkins and you scroll down to the bottom and you should see Manage Users. So if you click that, you can then click on Create User and you can create users for each of the people on your project. So they they too can log into the project, uh, to the Jenkins server, I should say, and work with it. Uh, right now, I don't have any other users to create, so I'm not going to worry about that. Uh, we now want to go back to Manage Jenkins, and we want to select Configure System. We're going to do some global configuration. Now, because in this video, we're going to be building a Java project, we need to tell Jenkins where to find the JDK. Uh, we also need to install Git so that it can check out code from a Git repository. And we need to install Maven so that uh, we can build our project using the Maven build tool. So we'll switch back to the Amazon EC2 instance and we will install all of these packages. So the first thing that we want to do is install the latest JDK from Oracle. And there is a particular repository we can use to do that. Again, that is in the gist that is linked in the description of the video. So I'm just going to paste in that command to add that repository. And we'll just hit enter. 
And there we go, the repository has been added. And then we can update the list of packages on the system by typing sudo apt-get update. And then there are just a few packages we want to install. So we're going to install uh, sudo apt-get install oracle java7 installer. We want uh, maven and we want git-core. So we'll say yes to that and that'll just take a few moments to install. Now you will be asked to accept the license agreement for the Oracle JDK so I'll just hit enter to accept that and I'll just say yes and press enter. And once it's finished installing we can just verify that Java C for example has been installed by typing Java C dash version and there we go that's been installed and we can say maven dash version. I'm sorry that should have been mvn dash version. And there we go that's been installed. So we need to specify the path to our Java home and to our Maven home. And so what I'll just do is type in read link dash F user bin Java C. And that will give us the actual uh, location where that points to, where the Java C binary points to. So I'm just going to select everything here except for the bin directory. And this is the Java home. So I'll just copy that and we will switch back to Jenkins and then you want to click on add JDK. So I'll uncheck install automatically because it's already installed and I'll just do something like Oracle JDK 1.7 here and then I'll paste in that path to the Java home. Now git we can just leave that as is. It's saying that there's no such executable but it will find it now that we have it installed and we can just click on add maven and so we need to uncheck install automatically once again. I'll type in maven I believe it was 304 and we have to copy maven home. So once again we'll type in read link dash f user bin mvn and the maven home again is everything except for the bin directory so user share maven. So we'll just paste that into maven home and we should be good to go there. Now a few other things here I'm just going to uncheck send anonymous usage stats. Uh, whether or not you choose to keep that enabled, that's up to you. Uh, the Jenkins URL you can leave as is, and then we need to set the email address from which email will be sent to your team members. So if you're one of my students, you'll want to use Jenkins at cs2212.ca. Uh, but if you're just someone following along with this video, you can use whichever email address you'd like. We're not going to be using the SSH server built into Jenkins, so I'm going to disable that and we'll scroll down here and now we need to set up email notifications so you need to, to paste in the SMTP server the host name of your SMTP server into this field here so I'm going to paste in my SMTP servers host name but of course you'll need to use your own and then we'll click on advanced so that we can set up SMTP authentication so we'll say use SMTP authentication and here's where you need to type in your username and password so I'll just paste in my username here and my password and I'm going to say use SSL and the SMTP port for my SMTP server is 465 but you'll need to get this information for your SMTP server. Okay so we want to test this out now so I'll select test configuration by sending test email and then I'll just type in my email address to make sure that it can send me an email. Clicking on test configuration we should receive an email. And there we have it. It has an email here. This is test email number one sent from Jenkins. It was sent from the email address that I set up, jenkins at cs2212.ca, and of course it was sent to me. So email is working properly and we know that we'll be able to receive email notifications from our Jenkins server. Okay, so it looks like everything is good to go. We can click on save and we've now completed our global configuration for our Jenkins server. Now it's time to actually set up a Jenkins project.